Hey guys, I'm back with another blindfold video. I'm going to make this especially hard today, and I've decided to challenge Computer 4 Impossible to a 10-10 game. It's always got its seek up there, so I'm in the mood for something challenging today. I'm going to play this comp. It's 2100 in standard, <laughs> so uh, wish me luck. <laughs> and the other thing about playing a computer is that I think... I don't know about these computers in standard, but most computers play almost instantly. They just make really, really quick decisions. So I'm probably going to be under some time duress because as you can see, it's already got 43 more seconds than it started in this 10 minute with 10 second increment game. I'm confident in my blindfold abilities though. One thing I kind of want to do, he's just played the move C4. I kind of want to trade pawns and then trade queens to make it a simpler position. Normally I wouldn't do that. In fact, in this exact position I played different stuff. But I don't know. I mean, I played knight bd7 before here too. You know what? I shouldn't back down from a challenge just because this is a blindfold game. And strategy-wise, it might might be preferable to keep it simple, but that's not what we're here for. <laughs> okay, so he played knight c3. It played knight c3. Um, hmm. I want to de develop my dark square bishop, but there's always a dilemma here. I talked about this in the previous video, too. Um, whether to put the bishop on like e7, d6... Uh, or even in this case, c5. I think I'm going to go bishop to c5. It's an unusual decision. But I like it. Because he doesn't have a pawn on d4. So I'm not worried about that being a problem. Okay, he goes knight h4. He's attacking my bishop on f5. Hmm. Bishop g4, bishop g6. Let's go bishop g6. Comp can get the two bishops now, but that's that's okay. Took on d5. Let's do c pawn takes. Played bishop f4. Feel pretty good about the position in my head right now. My b5 square is a, a little tender. I think he might jump the knight in. Nah, that's not a problem. I'm just going to castle. Yeah. Okay, it took. I'm going to take with the h pawn. Queen b3. Hits the pawn on b7. Let's go queen b6. Offer a trade. He did take it. Play knight takes. Knight takes knight b5. Bishop takes knight a4 maybe. I'll take it with the knight. Okay, rook a c1. Well, there's discovered attack possibilities for him down the c file, like knight takes d5 is a threat. If I defend the rook, I'm pretty sure the computer's idea is to play knight b5 next move on me. Which opens up the attack here, although it will be defended, but the a pawn is weak is what, I, what I'm concerned about. Huh. I could retreat my bishop, like pull it back to e7, or even stick it on d4. It should be e7, probably be more likely if something I do. 
Just not sure if I like that. Rook hc8, or uh, sorry, rook fc8 seems like the move, but knight b5, I'm not, not liking that position for some reason. Yeah, c7 is weak, d6 is tender. Can play knight bd7. I could go back, but still knight b5. Maybe I could go a6. And if he takes on d5 with the discovered attack on the bishop, I have bishop takes f2 check and I'll regain my piece. Okay, let's go a6. This is taking me a while to figure out, but. All right, and it did it. So I hope I'm not miscalculating. I don't think so. Yeah, let's do that. Took with the king. Now, which knight to take with? F knight or B knight? I like the look of F knight. So let's do that. Bishop e3. Bishop e3. Well, it's even material. He's got the two bishops. He's threatening bishop takes b6. Putting a rook on c8 is so normal looking. But I know that's not going to shake the pressure. starting to think I should have taken with the other knight. Yeah, I should have. But what to do here? Could go rook ab8. He takes on b6, I take back. He goes to rook c7, though. All right, I'm just going to do that. I don't want to get in too bad of time pressure here. I'm just going to bring the rook in, most likely. Sun game is ugly for me. <clears throat> rook here, maybe. And then he goes rook c1. Passive, passive, passive. Ugh. All right, I'm going to go knight d5. I'm probably consigning myself to a bad endgame. This king is on f2, not on e3. So he's just doubled. He has total control over the c file now. Trouble for me. I gotta get active. I gotta do something like that. He goes after the pawn. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to ditch my b pawn. 
So you can take on b7, I'll go rook d6. I'm going to hope this does something. Okay, he goes there. I'll check him on f6. At least it's an endgame now, it's simplified. And now, oh, rook e6, I was thinking. Hit the pawn on e2. I got him to retreat, so that's a plus. Maybe rook here now? Let's go rook here. Oh, <laughs> blunder. I thought the pawn was on d4. Oops. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, his pawn was on d3. I should have gone rook e3. Yeah, I'm still worse. I'm down a pawn, but uh, resign. Good game, computer impossible. Wow, that was tough. These computers are not 2100 for nothing. Ouch, that hurt big time. Yeah, I mean, let me grab the game and just see, see if I can look at the game. I'm gonna have to log out of my live chest for a second to do so. Let's go back to log in again. That's too bad. I had high hopes. Okay, analyze in live. Oh, that didn't do it. Sorry, forgot to change my settings. Uh, so I have to go to account settings, update your live chat settings. I showed how to do this on a previous video. And now we should be able to do this. Get to my games category and look at computer impossible. Uh, so I'll flip it and look at it from my perspective. I thought the, the start of the game was standard. In retrospect, I sort of wish I would have captured on c4, because then <laughs> I could have got to this queen's off position. But uh, it's not that big of a deal. I uh, just made that error, misplaced the pawn on d3 instead of d4. I gotta be somewhat worse here. He's got he's got an initiative. Like right around here, this rook ac1 move with knight b5 coming. I spent a good deal of time trying to figure out how to address the knight takes d5 problem with the hanging bishop. Um, rook fc8. Like I, rook fc8 would be a normal move, but this this bothered me. And he's threatening a couple things, like knight c7 is a big threat, and also maybe knight e6. Just trying to attack my rook, attack the pawn, maybe win the bishop pair. So I'm not sure there's like a perfect solution in this position. What I, what I settled on was doing a6, which addresses knight b5. And I saw that knight takes d5 would happen. But I thought after bishop takes f2 and then take, I would be okay. Even though I have the two knights versus his two bishops, I have one less pawn island. But I think I should have taken that way. Yeah, that, I mean, then bishop e3 is not possible because of that move. So that makes a pretty large difference, I believe. Maybe I'm still worse, because this is a pretty powerful bishop. I mean, his dark square, maybe he plays like bishop e5. Oh no, he can't play that move either, because of knight g4. I still feel I'm somehow worse here, because his bishops, whether he has one or both bishops, should be more effective than one or two of my knights. But um, yeah, I'm taking with the f knight, and then having him retreat here, that was a very good move. I think I'm struggling now. Struggling to avoid losing a pawn or getting a passive endgame, as happened here. Now, in, in endgames, especially ones where you know your opponent has an active uh, rook or pair of rooks, it's often correct to sacrifice a pawn in a bid for counterplay, rather than trying to defend passively. So, I, I felt like I should play rook fc8 in this position, trying to swap. But, um, I don't know, because... After rook fc8, rook fc1, I have this same problem. Take, take, and 
this is weak, probably fa falling, or I'm getting into a really passive rook ending. So therefore, I did the knight d5 move. He dominates the c-file. Then went after my d-pawn. Hmm. Maybe d4 was an option here. I didn't think about that. But he's just going to go here. I think I, I lose my d or b-pawn no matter what. I just need counterplay. I mean, at this point, my mindset is very much... Like, how can I sacrifice a pawn for the most activity with my rooks? I mean, if I have to play a move like this, I'm just going to lose in the long run. Like, he's going to do something like, I don't know, bring his king up. And there's only so long that you can survive with super defensive rooks like this. i got to get some activity. So I did rook bd8, and he took here. I went here. My idea was kind of like check or, or put the rook on e6. Which is what happened. I played check and got his king to go over here. Came back. That was a good move. Ah, and just unfortunately, I misplaced that pawn in my head. For some reason, I thought it was on d4. It's a really common blindfold error. Um, I mean, I'm probably in, in rough shape anyway, so I definitely don't like my chances here. But maybe rook e3? Threatening to take? Uh, he can deal with this in numerous ways. King d1 or rook d2. Probably king d1. I feel like these pawns will probably be my downfall. But there you have it. Uh, Rook e4, <laughs> d takes e4, and I resign because I'm completely losing. So, all right, well, this is going to be a challenge for me. I might give Computer 4 Impossible another try. Certainly I will in the coming videos. This is going to be a tough engine to beat, especially in a blindfold game. This would be a tough in a, in a regular game, but blindfold takes it to a whole new level. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this blindfold video. Feel free to leave me any, leave me any feedback. Have a good day. Bye.